This is quite a fun question with a circle, two circles in it, and then a chord that acts as a tangent between the two. There is a really quick way of doing this question, which I'm going to talk about at the end, but it kind of requires you to be doing multiple choice um, because actually the multiple choice shows that the answer does not depend on the radius of any of the circles. But in if those multiple choice weren't there, then you wouldn't know that. So it's actually, you know, in the in the case of a competition trying to get questions done, you can kind of use that method. But in the grand scheme of things, it is about proving results, which um, which is actually what we're going to do here. We're going to show that in fact the shaded area is not dependent on any of the radii. And I'll go through this quicker way at the end. So the way I did this is I, well, I, 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 I'm considering three circles. And so I considered the three different radii. And the large circle can be, the radius can be R3. The second largest circle, I'm going to call R2. And then the smallest is going to be R1. And one thing we see immediately is that um, 2R3 is going to be 2R2 plus 2R1. Or R3 is simply R1 plus R2. And we're trying to work out this shaded area. So in fact, the shaded area, it's worth writing this down at this point, I think, is going to be pi r3 squared, that's all of the area inside, minus pi r2 squared. I need to subtract this bit here, and I need to subtract that bit, which I could write as, um, I could add them here. In fact, I could even, I could even factorize out the pi and write it as r3 squared. Maybe it's just best to write it like that. Now, actually, it might be worth, you know, I didn't think to do this at the time, but we've, we've got this relationship here as well. R3 is actually R1 plus R2. So R3 squared is going to be R1 plus R2 squared, or multiply it out like double brackets like this which is going to be r1 squared plus 2r1 r2 plus r2 squared. So when I substitute that in, and minus the r2 squared and minus the r1 squared, you see that in fact they just cancel. So our answer is going to be 2 pi r1 r2. Okay, that's good. So the aim is now basically to find this. And we've not, I've not even, you know, used the facts yet. And the question that the length is six units. Now, when I did this question, I didn't do all this at this point. I did it later on. But I'm going to just talk about it now. You know, imagine you're doing this question. And you just wanted some hints. This is, this is a bit of a hint. This is what we're aiming for. Okay, so the next bit is this chord with length six units. So the whole thing is six. Now these are in the center. Um, we know that. The reason we know that is because this is a tangent, which means that it's at right angles to this radius and, and to this radius here. So, okay, we know that's 90 degrees. And so it must be that it's the same either side. It goes through the center. There's this line of symmetry going down and overall that means this purple line here is going to be three because it's going to be half of six. Now with these circle questions you tend to want to use the radius in some way of one of the circles or more than one of the circles and so I've drawn in the tangents but actually now I'm going to connect um, where it meets here where the two circles meet with this line here that's the center of my main circle and then to create a right, this is a right angle triangle. This is R3. So what I now need to think about is what this length is. And in fact, we can write it in two ways. We can either write it, right, this is R3. So it's either R3 minus 2R1. And 
or we could see it as 2R2 minus R3. Hey, either one of those will work. I think I'll go with the R3 minus 2R1 here. We can, of course, get the whole thing in terms of R1 and R2. Um, I think I'm going to just, for the moment, continue to work in terms of R3. So now I've got my right angle triangle. I can apply Pythagoras' theorem. It must be that R3 minus 2R1 squared plus 3 squared, which is 9, is equal to R3 squared. And therefore, R3 squared minus, I'm doing cross multiplying here. I'm going to get, not 2, I'm going to get 4R1 R3. plus 4 r1 squared plus 9 equals r3 squared. These cancel out, so I'm going to get 0 here. Okay, I haven't quite got enough room, I've just realised. Um, let's just try and roll with it though. So what next? Right, I've got, I've got r3, so I'm going to replace r3 now by r1 plus r2. So it's 4R1 squared minus 4R1, R1 plus R2 is going to, uh, plus 9 is equal to 0. Well, this is equal to minus 9. I'm just going to write that down. And therefore, 4R1 squared minus 4R1 squared minus 4R1 R2 is equal to minus 9. And now these cancel as well. So I'm left with R1, R2 is actually 9 over 4. And that's what I wanted. I wanted R1 times R2. I never intended to find R1 and R2. And in fact, you can't because there's an infinite number of values, you know, depending on the circle you draw. But we've got 9 over 4. So now, like when I did this question, I then did this stuff here. But in our case, we can just substitute in. 2 pi times 9 over 4, which is going to give me 9 pi over 2. And that is the answer. So to summarize, we've just proven that in fact for any circle with a chord of 6 units, when you have two circles inside like this, it must be that the shaded area is 9 pi over 2. Okay, irrespective of um you know we well, have to draw the circles in such a way but you know you could draw a bigger circle and have a chord sort of up here and then a really small r1 and a bigger r2 okay or you could have them the same size and that we're going to talk about that in a minute so we've proven that we did it by you know introducing the radii um and then creating a triangle this is always what you want to do in these sort of circle questions create a triangle use pythagoras theorem to try to link the radii together. We already had one link, of course. We had that R1 plus R2 was R3. Uh, we wanted the shaded area, and that also linked things together and simplified the area down to in terms of R1 and R2, um, which, of course, are dependent on R3. But then the key thing is relating the chord length to R3 and the, the other two things, we could have done it that way instead, create an equation, simplify it, and it just works out really nicely that we get 9 over 4. Substitute that back in, which gave us the area. Now, final comment is, you know, and the answers talk about this. I've seen other videos talk about this. You could look at a very special case and do this question very quickly. But the only reason you can do this is that the answers tell you, essentially, that it's not going to be dependent on the radius. Otherwise, you wouldn't know. So it's well worth still understanding this method here, I would say. You know, it's not just about learning how to do the intermediate maths challenge. It's about becoming a, a better mathematician. So we choose to make the circles exactly the same. So it goes through the centre here. So R1 is equal to R2. And this chord is 6, and it's actually now the diameter of the circle. So R3 is going to be 3. I've actually got a value for it. And then R1 and R2 
they're going to be half of that, 3 over 2. So we can now see the shaded area is going to be pi times 3 squared, the whole thing, minus 2 lots of pi times 3 over 2 squared. Okay, I'm finding the area of this circle and this circle, adding them together. And that's it. We'll just figure that out. 9 pi minus, well, this is 9 over 4, so it's going to be 9 over 4 times 2, 9 pi over 2 which is 9 pi over 2. So a, a satisfactory answer, um, but also, you know, don't neglect this here, I would say. Okay, well done for sticking around and watching this. I hope you're happy with that question. And I would advise you look at the you know, extension questions to the math challenge and investigate some of the things that should be rewarding. Thanks.